Do Lutherans believe in consubstantiation? Um, it, it's often been said that the Roman Catholic view of Holy Communion is transubstantiation and the Lutheran view is consubstantiation. And this is something that is said pretty much exclusively by those who are not Lutheran. And it's a way to identify what the difference is in an easy way between the Roman Catholic perspective and the Lutheran perspective. Uh, to say that, well, the Lutherans believe, or the Roman Catholics believe that there is this, this transubstantiation of the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ, whereas Lutherans believe that there is just uh, the bread and wine with the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, which is where the term consubstantiation comes from. Um, but within the Lutheran tradition, this is not a term that we have used to describe our view. And generally, as a Lutheran, when you hear somebody say, oh, you believe in consubstantiation, um, that is kind of the signal that the person doesn't know what anything about Lutheranism. Um, honestly, if it shuts down the conversation for you to be like, oh, yeah, you believe in consubstantiation. Let me talk to you about that. It clicks and you say, OK, you don't know anything about Lutheranism. Let's kind of stop this conversation or let me tell you what we actually believe. Um, because it is one of those things that is always used uh, from those outside of the tradition, but never inside of the tradition, which is kind of a frustrating thing uh, in that, you know, and I think we all have a tendency to do this too with people differing beliefs than we have. We should try to use the language that they use because it shows that we actually have listened to and understood where they're coming from uh, before we, we deal with it and before we even criticize. Okay, so show like, oh yeah, I know what you believe. This is what it is. This, this is how you express it and here's why it's wrong. Okay, if you wanna do that. Uh, but, but as soon as you say something like that, it's very clear that you haven't understood, you haven't really understood the position uh, because you're probably, you're not getting that from Lutheran sources. So you're getting it from sources from outside of Lutheranism. Um, so if you want to you know, get it from, from a Lutheran source, what do you believe about the Lord's Supper? Um, technically, you know, we don't have a particular term that is used, okay? There's no one easy term that's used. Now, the term consubstantiation is one that was used in, in the Middle Ages at times. So there, there were debates among, in uh, the, you know, the 12th century when people are trying to kind of figure out exactly what it means that this is Christ's body and blood in the sacraments. Um, and in this debate goes back before that with Retramnus and Radbertus who are in what the ninth, ninth century, I believe, uh, but I could have those, those dates wrong. Um, uh, and, and then after that as well, you have some some debates about exactly how Christ is present, the nature of that, uh, and through that you have the development of this idea of transubstantiation. Well, in the midst of a lot of those discussions about what it means that Christ is present in the Eucharist, um, you have different views that that were uh, formulated and, and proposed. And so there's impanation, which is this kind of like implanting of the body in the bread and implanting of the blood in the wine. You have consubstantiation that that along that there is with the the blood there is this kind of spiritual or with the wine there's a spiritual partaking of, of christ's blood um, and there are different ways that those terms were used there are different particular nuances to the theologians who use those terms so the reason why lutherans don't use that phrase is because it was tied to very particular explanations of what was going on in the eucharist and how it is that christ's body and blood are present now the the lutheran view, and I think there, there's kind of a misunderstanding here uh, in that the, the Lutheran phrase, right, that's used often is in, with, and under. Okay, so the body and blood of Christ are in, with, and under the bread and the wine. Now, I, I think it's a mistake to look at that as, well, here's an exact theological formula that, okay, well, let's see what it means for it to be in the bread. Okay, it's also with the bread, it's under, you know, the and the point is not to formulate some very specific ways in how is it that the body of Christ is attached to the bread? How is it that the blood of Christ is attached to the wine? Um, and, and I think those phrases that are used, okay, in, with, and under, are basically just to cover all the bases to say, yeah, it's the body and blood of Christ, okay? So in it, with it, under it, whatever you wanna say, it's there. It really is the body and blood of Christ. Uh, to say that there, there really is a true presence of Christ's body and a true presence of his blood to the extent that you can hold the bread of communion and say, this is the body of Christ. It is the body of Christ. And you can hold the cup and say, this is the blood of Christ. And it is the blood of Christ. That doesn't mean that it's not also bread. And that doesn't mean that it's not also wine. Um, it is possible to be two things at once. Uh, this is what we confess with the Tanishas of Christ. This is why, you know, Irenaeus makes this connection between um, the, the human and divine natures in Christ and the present, the body of Christ 
uh, and the bread. Okay, so it is both at once. But we don't go beyond to give an explanation of exactly what that means or how that works. See, this is this is kind of the problem with the idea of transubstantiation. The problem isn't that it's confessed that it's Christ's body and blood. We believe that that's the case. Um, and I think that's very clearly the case. Luther certainly believed that was a much better explanation than someone like Zwingli would offer with saying that it's 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 symbolic um, or later Calvin's view that it's that there's a spiritual presence. Some actually argue that Zwingli held to a spiritual presence as well. I don't see that in the works of Zwingli, but um, and then spiritual, what the heck does that mean? So there's plenty of nuance to get into there as well. Um, but the so the problem with transubstantiation is not the confession that it's the body of Christ or the blood of Christ. And in reality, it's not that important whether the bread and wine are there, right? It's more important that we confess the body the body of Christ is there and the blood of Christ. That, that's the point of the sacrament, uh, it, to debate over whether the, the uh, you know, bread and wine are there isn't really the major focus, um, this is, which is why Luther said he'd much rather drink blood with the papists than um, mere wine with Zwingli. Uh, because the era of Zwingli is much worse. Uh, it's much farther from, from where Luther himself was. So the problem is that it's a philosophical explanation that goes too far. So to say, yes, the substance of, you know, the, the substance changes while the accidents remain the same. Philosophically, well, I understand, you know, what that's getting at in, you know, Aquinas, of course, wants to use Aristotle's language as much as possible. I mean, that's that's what he does. Um, it's an explanation. Is it a great explanation? I don't think so. Um, is it a definitive explanation? Certainly not, because scripture doesn't use that kind of language. Um, so th the problem is it's trying to explain a mystery in too much depth in a way that we don't we, we don't really have the answer to in scripture. And so Luther wants to shy away from answering questions that we don't have to have answered. To, so to step back and say, let's not try to explain this. Let's say this is the body of Christ. Let's say this is the blood of Christ. That's what Jesus says. It's also bread because Paul says that, right? This bread that we break, is it not participation in the body of Christ? Okay, so it's also bread. Jesus also says this is the body. So uh, it's, it's both, um, but we don't want to go any further than that. And, and consubstantiation can also kind of imply what, what's called a Capernaitic eating of the body of Christ, meaning that it's uh, an eating that is uh, more, more fleshly in that uh, this is, and I've done a video on this as I addressed the question of are Lutherans cannibals, which is, sounds kind of ridiculous, but hey, it's, it's a question that I got. So, um, but uh you know, so there's there's this idea that's a misunderstanding that, you know, we, we're kind of like really ripping Christ's body to pieces as we're eating the bread, you know, just like you eat a you eat a hamburger, right? Or you eat a piece of steak. And this is not the case. We, we're really receiving him in our mouths. But but it is a spiritual reality. And, and by spiritual, I don't mean non-bodily. Okay? Um, but, but it is a reality that is beyond our senses. Uh, and it's not ordinary. And with, with that being the case, that language of consubstantiation, sometimes to people can apply that kind of Capernetic eating, okay? That, that idea that it's, it's just a regular fleshly eating of a body in the way that you would eat the body of, you know, your dinner, if it's an animal, okay? And that's clearly not the case. So, hey, in short, no, we don't believe in consubstantiation. Uh, we don't use that term. Um, Lutherans don't historically use that term. Uh, I've been told that there are a couple people in history that have. I'm not sure who they are. I've never run across it in a Lutheran writing. Everything that I've ever read, um, it's denied. Um, so at some point, somebody used the term supposedly, um, but I, I, again, I've never seen it. I don't even know who it was, um, but this is what I've been told. I don't know, but it's generally definitely not the way that we express ourselves. So. Sometimes people talk about real presence as, as another way of talking about it. Um, but that has to be defined too, because what, what do you mean by real presence? Um, you know, some Calvinists would use the term, it's a real presence of Christ, but the presence is really, I am present with him in faith as I'm eating, but he's not really present here according to his human nature. So that's not, uh, you know, I don't think that's really a real presence. But you've got to be careful about what you mean by all of this. So I think that it'd be nice if there's an easy theological, and sometimes sacramental union is used. 
But again, I think that's still kind of vague. So it, it'd be nice if you can just use a short term, say Lutherans believe this. But I think we're better off just sticking with the words of, of Jesus because there is no good term, at least to just summarize all of it at this point, um, than to say what Christ says, this is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. Th those are the things we partake of the in the Eucharist is the real body of Christ and the real blood of Christ. And just kind of leave it at that without further explanation.